Now we're going to replace the upper plenium manifold and we're going to save the gasket. We're going to keep it to the side until we can rest the plenium itself perfectly to the top of the engine. We must first connect the idle air control valve stepper motor and the idle air control valve sensor plug between the firewall and the rear of the engine. It's always best to use new gasket when doing your installation. So we have applied some silicone on the edge of this metal gasket and we're going to reuse it. You don't want to apply too much silicone because when you squeeze the two part together some of the silicone are going to squeeze out into the port area. Be careful with this area and the distributor. We must also pay attention to the EGR valve. We do not want the gasket to fall off the valve itself. We will now place two bolts in the front of the plenium manifold and the, to hold the gasket in place. and another one in the rear. This will stabilize the plenium for us to make connection for the EGR valve. We're going to replace the EGR valve bolts and the bracket by simply placing the bracket in the original position we removed it. You will be able to visually see the bracket from here. Then you will place the bolt through the valve. The trick is to this part is you want to make sure you pass both of the bolts through first before you catch the bracket. Once you have both of the EGR bolts drawn up by hand, then you can use the ratchet to fully tighten it. You will tighten this to around 25 foot pounds of torque. Now remember the silicone has about 30 minutes to dry until it's fully cure. So you have limited time on the EGR installation. Now we will tighten up our two original bolts that was used for our alignment. This will seal the silicone between the joints. Replace the remaining bolts and catch the threads by hand 
before using the tool replace the distributor cap it is always a good maintenance to clean out the electrode inside the cap before replacing it when I say clean out I mean remove the oxidation from the electrodes under the cap and the rotor we will replace our coil wire for number six cylinder number four and number two don't forget to replace the ignition wire in the holder you don't want the ignition wire to become chafered on the engine surface we will replace our three 10 millimeter bolts one for the electrical and the two other for the harness anchor The 10 millimeter bolts would be torqued to 8 foot pounds. This is the connection for the right side valve cover breeder hose. This is the installation for the EGR diaphragm valve temperature sensor.
we must always check all of our vacuum line making sure we make all our connection it is wise sometime to label your vacuum line so you don't forget any line if you do forget a vacuum line the engine will will idle above normal RPM we will replace the accelerator cable in the same manner we remove it by hooking the anchor to the coax cable into the throttle body valve and replacing the two 10 millimeter bolt from its adjusting bracket It is always best when you can apply some oil Now we are at the end of our installation and I will, dis I will reconnect the positive terminal for the battery so we can start the engine. You will fill the radiator up from any coolant that you lose on the hose that was disconnected by the firewall and you will fill up the coolant reservoir to the max level. Don't forget to connect the vacuum line at the back of the engine. That vacuum line will be on the hose, or should I say the tube that is bolted to the valve cover. We, we have no engine light, which means this installation is complete with success. We will let the engine idle for 10 minutes so all the oil can burn off its surface. Then we will take the vehicle for a test drive, recheck all fluid. Once the engine is warmed up and is at idling RPM, we will make adjustment to the idle control valve by turning this screw right here. Perfect. 